Welcome to PM Express Business Edition. Well, it's all about COVID. And you know, one critical sector of our economy is SMEs and entrepreneurs. But in this time of COVID-19, what about those angel investors out there, those businesses out there who are passionate about supporting small businesses and those bad entrepreneurs out there? What is going to happen to them? Well, I'll be going to engage one person who is so passionate about entrepreneurship and supporting small businesses. We want to know who that person is. We'll take a break and be right back. Welcome back from the break. This is Business Edition PM Express. As you talk about COVID-19, and supporting these burden entrepreneurs out there. There's one gentleman who he says is very passionate about supporting small businesses and developing that spirit of entrepreneurship. He's talking about growing a billionaire in Ghana from supporting these small businesses out there. Well, COVID-19 is here with us. Are these businessmen still committed to this vision and focus of supporting small businesses out there? Or because of COVID-19, well, that support is going to dwindle. Dr. Daniel McCauley is a group chief executive of Magdan Group. Thank you so much for engaging us or having time to talk to us. Let me ask you, how are you doing? Well, I'm managing. I'm managing. How managing are you managing, one would ask? Well, you can see what is going on right now. We all have to take a step back and rethink about our businesses and have a new focus and uh, be more inward, inward mm. thinking. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you, you are a businessman. I mean, we've seen how COVID has impacted on the broader economy. I know that private firms like you have not been excused. And that's why I'm asking how you manage in this time to survive. There are a lot of people who've laid off. There are some who are closing down certain units and all the rest. That You might not be excused from that. Not at all. My business is hardly hit. You know, I'm in the logistics business, the mm -hmm. airline business. So no air, aircraft is flying in terms of passenger, cargo. It's only the vessels which are moving. So I'm, I'm badly hit. I'm, I'm losing over three, four million every month, dollars. So that is what is going on right now with me. Um, I need, I need, I don't employ because of certificates. You understand? It's the attitude. It's a don't you think that sometimes it is needed to get some basic grounding and understanding? No, definitely, def definitely. So I that mean, I don't walk up to you and tell you that I finished SSS like ten years ago, but I can work hard and all the rest, and you're going to employ me. Well, I hear I hear those things many times. I mean, you can see running interviews. You can see very eloquent, good, smart. Um, a young man, but when you put them to the work, it's, it's a bit sad. Mm. You know, the resource is, is, is very appalling. As a, a business owner and not drifting away from this main focus of the interview, do you think that certificates matter or it's about the person's commitment, zeal, and understanding of the situation? Like in well, outside, some companies are doing away with certificates. A certificate matters. It matters. it matters, as I keep saying, but the attitude, attitude supersedes everything. You need the basics anyway. You need and the to, certificate is the basis. The certificate is the basis. The attitude is everything. Haven't you had instances where you've taken on people with first class and all the rest, and in terms of output, was very poor? Very poor. Yeah, very poor. That is why I'm saying is the basis. I mean, you should have... Um, I would not take a certificate about the right attitude. Mm. The attitude is everything. Commitment to work is everything. How are you also trying to make sure that you survive this challenge in terms of COVID? Because at the national level, you've seen how it's impacting badly on the economy. Again, let me just try to find out from what do you think you need right now or what do businesses need right now? to survive this test, this challenge? Well, we, 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 we all need to rethink. We all need to re-diagnose our businesses. Uh, COVID, the world is moving faster. Mm. 
And for me, um, COVID, though I'm losing some money, but I feel it had redefined certain aspects of my business. Mm. It's not all that bad. It had reawoken us to look at areas uh, we are not looking at our business. We could be making millions, billions, but uh, we are so content and satisfied with the little we're making. Uh, this lockdown had really um, opened my eyes. Let mm. me talk for myself. I really opened my eyes to look at areas of my business I was not looking at. And also to look at the future of certain businesses to be able to say, okay, this business in Africa has, business, has, has, has a future in Africa. Mm. This one in Ghana has a future. This one, um, at least, I have to really look at it. So putting all of them um, on a playing field mm. to see which one you which one has future and which one need to slow down, this, which one you have to accelerate. You think, so, the, you think that re-strategizing could be the best option for businesses to survive this challenge? Yeah, re-strategizing and also um, looking at our terrain. No? You have to look at both. We have the external factors and the internal factors. Mm. This COVID should let you know that, uh, to let you relook really at both factors and playing in your business. Mm. What makes Dr. Daniel McCauley so passionate about entrepreneurship and then supporting small businesses? There has been, an, and I know you've answered this question several times in your interviews and engagement. What is it about entrepreneurship that you think that they need the support you invested so much money into this project and all the rest. Why? I mean, set up your business, go to the bank, get the financing, and yeah. grow your firm. You know, um, our African setting, our Ghanaian setting, opportunities are there. But the mentality, the zeal, our educational system, put all together, we're not producing or churning out what we're supposed to churn out from the universities and from all sectors. Um, Magdan is very passionate in seeing other businesses grow. As I'm talking to you, there are a lot of areas I can go, but I want to fo focus on, on logistics. On logistics and construction. Mm. Right. A lot of people don't know, but I don't want to do everything. Most businesses come, I call others to say, hey, look, take this and run with it. When you have a problem, come back to me and let's see how to fix it up. You grow with people. You don't grow in isolation. You know, I decided to help entrepreneurs because I can see opportunities. And this COVID time, you can see, this is what we call um, preparation meet opportunity. Mm. That will bring you sources. Every young man, you have to be ready and prepare. When opportunity comes, you jump at it. So what I am doing is I'm preparing as many young men as I can. Last year, we grew over 20 businesses. 10 are doing so well. This COVID time, all those on the Magdan Entrepreneur Challenge, the finalists, I have had interaction with them. Um, I'm talking to them about their businesses, their troubles, some of them, I even asked them to advise me because they've also gained a lot of uh, um, experience. Mm. Because they've been mentored, groomed, and guided, mm. and also helped with finances. Um, this is what I am passionate about. As I keep saying, when I become a billionaire, I want to see more millionaires around me. One would also want to find out that you invested so much into this whole uh, Magdan entrepreneurship challenge. One, the ultimate winner took away almost, is it $10 million or $1 million? Yeah, yeah. $10 million. $100,000. $100,000, right? Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. What, what measures have you put in place, again, for this to ensure that it moves away from just doling out the cash yeah. and ensuring that 10 years from now, that ultimate winner indeed has been able to grow his firm to maybe a multinational? Yeah, well, you hear his story very soon. I mean... Right now, as I'm talking to you, um, he's a share, he, 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 he produces shea butter, mm. uh, Mako shea. He came from the Upper East region. And warehouses are going to build for him. 
um, vehicle is going to be given to him. Uh, seed capital will be given to him to start buying share notes and producing share notes. We're going to give him an off-taker from Canada. Uh, so he's going to be a very big time uh, share note producer. And all this has been worked out because uh, he gets some cash mm. and his mentors will guide him to give him the resources to make sure that uh, he becomes the biggest share butter producer in this country within a year. Interesting, Sam. Yeah. But if you look at, this is something that you are passionate about, mm. but one would say that in the era of COVID, where angel investors like you may be having challenges with businesses and all the rest, mm. do you think that the future of supporting these burden entrepreneurs could be under threat or it's a passion? And that is you as an individual. What about the rest? Well, you know, we all have limits. You cannot give what you don't have. Um, I cannot go doing charity if I'm not making enough. At times you have to be honest, I'm not doing charity for sure. I'm not doing charity for myself. I'm doing charity because I want to see a resource. I'm doing charity, I'm spending so much money. If I'm not making enough money, I cannot go sharing. Mm. Um, I'll be a very bad businessman. So I need to work very hard. I need to make sure that uh, I reserve a percentage of my um, revenue mm. to support the youth. Um, I don't like lazy youth. I mean, everybody knows that of me. If you are lazy, you can't be around me. And um, we begun, we be, we, we, we're in an era where we have to create the young, the young guy. Mm. It's not fun fair, you know. I was born in the streets. It's, it's not, it's not business as usual. When time is changing, we all had need to change the way we do things. I see. Moving on, fast forward. So this is Macdan doing this. What about your your colleague businesses? And that's where about the thing comes about about institutionalizing this. Mm. That, yes, we want to do this, but because of COVID, we can't do this. How do we ensure that in these challenging times, that spirit of entrepreneurship and these angel investors out there is not broken, it's not affected? You, you know, this is the time we're supposed to rather do more. Is that we're supposed when to... you are bleeding as a businessman. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, you know how you it, tell it, your it, colleague businessman who is bleeding that it, let's so support these burden entrepreneurs. It's there? all about ideas. It's all about ideas. The little, I mean, you could be doing 10, but you can start from one. And also, I believe that uh, in times of need, in times like these, um, that is where somebody needs somebody. And uh, um, I'm admonishing my friends and my colleagues. Many a times, McDonald always set the pace. We set the pace, we, we, we come out with the idea. And then we come out with the idea. You see a lot of people wanting to follow the idea. And that is how the world's supposed to be. Mm. You know, we, we, we try to be very innovative, creative in the way we even, the areas we choose to support. For me, it's not about we doing it, but the impact, you know. It's about time we look at the impact. What impact are we creating? Well, right now, uh, World Bank statistics shows that when you help one entrepreneur and he employ one person, you have really, you're helping 500 people. Mm. That is what the statistics shows. When you help one person, start growing his business. Within one year, you're helping over 500 people. And what impact are we creating? So this is the time, the little that we can share. And this is the time you also have to do more mentoring. Mm. You know, it's not just doning out and dashing yeah. money. This is the time to let the young men know that, hey, look, there's an opportunity here. COVID is not all that bad. And That's what you think? Yeah, yeah. Some not. are saying that, listen, it will be here for a long time. As long as we have not found the vaccine. It's here to stay with us. But, but if, it's, it's if, not if about at the early stages, this is what we are seeing, then 
Some are saying the future could be bad for us. No, no, we've not seen nothing yet. Really? No, 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 no. We're going to see real problems. You're quite an optimist. Yeah, we, we've not seen nothing yet. We're going to see real problems. You see, because right now, the world economy has declined to about 3 2%. This really happened in the year 1948, mm. after the Second World War. And we're going to, as I'm talking to you, employment in other parts of the world are cut into 50%. I was reading an article on Indonesia, Kenya, and the rest. And the garment industry and the women industry are struggling with, with work. Mm. At times, it's also necessity is, 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 is the matter of all invention. Yeah. This is the time we have to domesticate. This is the time we have to look inwardly. A lot of innovation, innovation is coming out. Ghanaians are very smart. Young Ghanaians are very smart. We're importing so much. We're spending so much on foreign goods. We, 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 we are too foreign. Aren't you a beneficiary? You are into logistics. People who are important, even oh, yeah. pure, into this country. Oh, yes. I mean, um, I'll make the money out of you yeah. if, if you bring your foreign stuff. That is why I'm not stopping. Right? I went into logistics very early, and that is my field. It's both way, import and mm. export. But, but being a patriotic Ghanaian, I want to see the better Ghana. If it change, we begin to have export surplus. Right, I'll be the bigger beneficiary because I'll be exporting everything out of this country. Whilst you're using local currency, exporting for some foreign currency, and that is the bigger, bigger picture. Mm. And we all have to change our mentality. So the difficult times are yet to come. We are yet to face it. Mm. For the past few months, see what is, what is happening. It's going to be worse. And you don't wake up today to think your tomorrow is going to be better than your today. You'll be deceiving yourself. Some, in other countries, a lot of support is given to businesses and angel investors that advance support to entrepreneurs. Yeah. I don't know the, the case that pertains here in Ghana because I don't think it happened. Do you think that we've gotten to the stage where at a time when these angel investors are having problems with their businesses, government should come in and give some tax reliefs if you advance X amount of money to support small businesses, entrepreneurs, and even employ a percentage of your persons or workers are coming in as fresh graduates? Well, for me, we have to look at it very well. It depends on the master plan we put together to help. Mm. You know, are you giving the money to companies to help their employees, mm. or you are giving money to angel investors like me to build others. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I believe this government was very proactive uh, from the beginning to say, look, this money is uh, about 600 million to small and medium scale businesses. Uh, but if you ask me, that money should just go to the small-scale businesses. I the mean, micro ones. The micro small ones. The micro ones. Not the medium-sized ones. Not the medium-sized ones. But they're also bleeding. No, it's, the money is too small. It's, 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 it's an effort from the government. And look, um, the engine of growth in this country are in the small and the med uh, medium-scale businesses. There are thousands of them. And... If you look at the statistics, Ghana in Africa has the highest number of entrepreneurs. Check the statistics. Those having cures, selling. We have more women entrepreneurs mm. than men in, in small businesses. And I believe that uh, uh, the Ministry of Business Development and other few agencies are looking at those people. They are those I'm also picking to build. And if every year I can build 10, um, 10 years, we're talking about building 100 businesses. I'm having 100 CEOs under my umbrella. I think I should be proud of that. Isn't that too ambitious, uh, McDonald? Not at all. I mean, it's, it's easy. I mean, I mean big businesses are even collapsing. They're collapsing. They're going down. 
I mean, to put that as your focus, you're going to support, what, 100 businesses, I mean, startups? Well, it takes every year. It's not that I'm going to do all at the same time. Most businesses, when I was running the Entrepreneurial Challenge, what I noticed was that uh, most businesses, um, what they need is not capital. Mm. Most of the guys come in, most of the fresh businesses, I noticed that it's not, it's not money that they need. Mm. They need mentoring. They need coaching. And I said to myself, wow, this is amazing. Some of them are already on the track making some good money. So you just coach them that do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this. And I mean, some would say mm. strengthen your bookkeeping, strengthen your sales, go out there and make some more sales. Uh, tweak here, tweak there, and that's it. Mr. McDonald, I'll take a short break. And if you just join us, this is Business Edition PM Express as you look at COVID-19. and. Angel investment and supporting those small and burden entrepreneurs out there. He's one individual that believes so much in entrepreneurship and supporting small businesses out there. But with the wake of COVID-19, what would happen to these angel investors? Are they still going to assure us that they are committed to supporting small businesses out there? On your back, I look at the regulation, the environment. Is it promoting entrepreneurship or rather discouraging them? And again, what fraction should be mentoring, what fraction should be capital and funding. This is PM Express Business Edition. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break as PM Express Business Edition as we talk about COVID-19, angel investment, and supporting those burden entrepreneurs out there. They are sure that in the wake of all these problems, their funding, their support will not be disrupted anyway. One individual that believes so much in entrepreneurship is Dr. Daniel McCauley, who has over the years been doing a lot of programs to support those burden entrepreneurs out there. Mr. McCauley, let me talk, let me ask you, how is your entrepreneurship challenge doing in the first place? Well, we finished the first season. Yeah. We got the winner. The 10 finalists got some money. Mm. Some... Uh, uh, very soon you see the presentation on TV or on radio. Um, what they have gained for me is the coaching aspect. And you think that is very critical? That is very critical uh, to me because um, I have been there before mm. and I didn't get what they get. And uh, I can tell you, they got good coaches and uh, I don't think anybody who sits under my feet or I give the person shoulder, my shoulder to stand on, will be a failure because I'm never a failure and I won't be a failure. Mm. So if I coach you and you fail, then uh, it's in failure, it's in your DNA. You talked about one critical thing. That's something I want to push further, that engaging some of these entrepreneurs, the problem was not capital but mentoring, more of technical support. Yeah. Is that really the case? Because every young guy you meet on the streets, like, George, can you help me fund this thing, do this, this, I need money. That is, I, I found that research or that findings based on this whole entrepreneurship challenge is very interesting because you meet some of these guys, they have everything. They believe that capital is the 100% solution to their problem. Not at all. That is the mentality, but that, that, that is not What the is case. the reality on the ground? Um, the reality on the ground is they are be lazy, mentally. And uh, they always want to be rich as at yesterday. You see, what creation is patience. What creation, building your business, you must have some level of consistency. Mm. And also integrity plays a role in there. Uh, most of them don't need money, uh, depending on the business you choose. Um, I can give you many examples of some of the businesses I built. Some of, some of the boys I had helped, I did not help them with money. I helped them with contact and relationship. But what I want them to keep your integrity high. I mean, without integrity, you can never get anywhere. Consistency is also a key factor in here. So 
I can pick many businesses and tell you that, look, I can turn you into a millionaire if you can keep your integrity high. How difficult is this? We are in an environment where some will say that you have to be a shrewd businessman to survive. And for these entrepreneurs that are coming up, that's what they always think, that you have to cut corners. I mean, Mr. McDuck, I mean, some will say that if you want to be premium proper, you won't survive this market. It's not about being premium proper. It's about being straight and honest. What is premium proper? There's nothing in business like premium proper. Um, what you have to be, you have to be straightforward. The palace uh, shopping guy is my friend. I can make you overnight a millionaire just by introducing you to him, if you're honest and you're hard working. I can guarantee a $1 million worth of cargo from him. Go and sell it and go and pay back. If you can stay with your integrity, just by phone call, you go there, I'm guaranteeing it for you. I'm not paying him because um, I'm a guarantee. I'm your guarantee. Just go and look for the market. In this COVID time, people are building, right? Just go and sell 200,000 worth of good. You make profit that was 30, 20%. We're mm -hmm. talking about 20,000 in your pocket. With 10%, you're making 20,000 in your pocket. You are better off than somebody sitting in the bank if you can move. What is money? Money doesn't play anything here. That is why you need to serve. Most young men now don't serve. You can never be a king if you don't want to be a servant. Peter Tosh sang a song and mm. said that. If you don't want to die, you can't get to heaven. But isn't the environment itself corrupted? Listen, I need to get a license. I need to see someone, someone, someone. I need to get a permit. I need to see someone. I need to get something done. I need to see that someone. Is a, that is a mentality. I have to pay someone. And that is the system. And that's why I'm saying it, it that is not you the, have to it, be it, it a is, shrewd businessman to survive this market. The, it is not the system. Tell me more, sir. It is not the system. You see, you can create your system. In a right. corrupt system? In the, a perceived the, corrupt system? I like the word you use, perceive. The system is not really corrupt. We have corrupt people out there. You have to, you see, that's why I say, I set the standards. Right? Nobody can walk to me to lead me to in a corrupt way. My name is uh, Macaulay. I'm Magdan. I have a brand to protect. Because you have that brand today. Yes, I did this. not yesterday. Yes, from yesterday. I, I don't want to talk much, but I can, I can tell you things I have let go because of my integrity. We're talking about millions have let go because of my integrity. That is Dr. Danga Macaulay. But the system... No, no, before the doctor was added. Them days, right, when things were tough, right, but you need to stand up for what is wrong and what is right. And that is one of the things that make me very proud. And that is why whoever I'm mentoring, whoever I'm moving with to make you come up to the top, I tell you that check your integrity. If not, you will not last. You will not last in business. Be honest. There's nothing like having business, failing in business, rising in business. Be honest. It's, it's, it's good. I mean, you, you build an empire and you've tried to follow this way. But as a McDonald's, some will say that maybe uh, you can talk this way because maybe politically you're connected. And maybe that is why. <laughs> Doc well, is connected politically, and that is why he's, he's successful as a businessman. Well, and in this, in this today, Ghana, you cannot succeed without being politically connected. And you use it to you your know, advantage. You, 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 you just say politically connected. But check the history of Magdan. Where am I coming from? Look, I've been here for long. Mm. I, I, really this time, I didn't do any, any business, government business. The first time I didn't do any government business, but I made money. I made good money. Uh, Joe Mohammed time, I didn't do any government business, but I made good money. At time, most times, too, the same. But you see, I sat, down, I sat back quietly, and I said to myself, I have never seen 
any billionaire, any part on this planet who doesn't do business with the government. The government is the biggest spender. But don't forget, I build myself before this level. That someone I, said there's a clear line between doing business for government and being politically connected to government. Exactly. You need to make friends. You know, you know we, 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 we in Africa, we see business, politics. I don't know how we see it, but you need to be an astute businessman. How do you make your connection? Handshake, but keep your integrity high. That is why I always talk about integrity. What is politics? We are political animals anyway. We, are, we want this country to grow. But it's what you touch. You see, this is why we think we've left the country in the hands of foreigners. Mm. This is our mentality that push us to leave this country in the hands of foreigners. And I'm telling you, we can do better. Mm. We can stand up and, and, and deliver better. Mm. Mm. So we the young men, we the upcoming young men, let's put politics aside and, and let's do business. I, I, I engage some of these burden entrepreneurs and they have that same mentality that, listen, oh, I was going to look for this job, they asked me for my party card and all the rest. And they believe that, listen, you cannot succeed in this today economy if you're not connected, they will ask you, what is this man's contribution to the party if you want to give him a contract? No, that is not true. I can tell you that is not true. Nobody has asked you about your contribution to party A, party B no, before no, no, giving no. you a contract NDC to do? NDC never asked me, though whatever I put in there I don't get. Nobody asked me. NPP had never asked me. CPP had never asked me. Nobody asked me. No, I don't. You see, let's be honest to mm. ourselves and let's be honest to the system. We are businessmen. I always want to talk business, right? Let's give praise where praise due. You know, let's condemn what is not right. I don't think it is true. Well, it depends. Everybody, if I'm, I'm, I belong to a particular mm. party, I like to definitely favor people uh, who are my friends. I would like to favor people who have the capacity to deliver, who I know. Mm. I would like to do that. I become, more, I become more confident with somebody who I know that he can deliver. Mm. But it's, it's, it's normally suicidal if uh, businesses, you give business to somebody you have confidence in and he cannot deliver. So I don't, don't have... I don't do, think don't you true. think that is the bane of Ghanaian businesses where everyone hasn't got that opportunity to play on that level field. But because I'm related to X, this person might be seem to be sympathetic to my party, therefore I'm gonna give the contract to him. The person get the contract, that person might not be that qualified. He does a bad project and then people are killed and all the rest. And that is where the problem is. Well, I, I, I deliver, so I really don't care which angle the person is coming from. If I have to help you, I will help you to deliver. Mm. That is my mark. And uh, we all have to get focused and uh, stop using politics when we are feeling. Stop using, we use too much feelings. You know, in business, there shouldn't be feelings. Why mm -hmm. do you use feelings? I mean, um, let's get focused mm. and keep fighting. Keep mm. fighting till you get it. Do you think that today's businessman and today's entrepreneur can rise to the top by taking politics out, be very prim, or you don't want to use the prim and proper in terms of being respected, integrity, and all the rest, and that will get that person there. Some would say that that is a wish world. I use myself as an example. I go here. So who cannot get here? I go here without politics. Tell me. I use myself and as an example. Mm. I made, I, I, I've gotten to about 30% of the level I will become. So this my 30% you think I have rise, I have gotten to this level. What shows I cannot get to my 100? I haven't reached anywhere yet. I'm now starting. Doc, looking at the way you are passionate about entrepreneurship, small businesses, some would say that what about the environment, the regulatory environment, the systems 
that actually promotes entrepreneurship and support them. How do we get around that? Because some see it's still a tough world out there. Doc might be doing something. Yes, that might be just one or two percent of it. But how do we nationalize this thing to ensure that the system itself is conducive for entrepreneurs out there? Well, it's a problem. If you ask me, it's a problem. But I think we're getting somewhere. Uh, we have to systematize the system, mm -hmm. right? Until America was, America in the uh, late 70s, mid 70s, where we were all here. And um, if you are in Ghana, you don't see what is happening. But if you move out of Ghana and come back, you can see that we are moving at a faster rate. Not long ago, you don't, uh, you can just walk into licensing office and register your car and drive away. Now you need a TIN number. National Health Identification. You get set in place, you can see that the systems are beginning to work and we need to appreciate that Normally, we don't appreciate that, but we are growing very, very fast. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Uh, if you look at the rate of growth in Ghana and the things um, governments are bringing on board, I think we are running very fast, and we have to appreciate that. There had been a lot of bureaucracy uh, in the system. They are still there, though. Is it the biggest problem as well, where we cannot simplify things? I mean, it's a hell, some would say. No, change is difficult. You have to understand. We all have to understand change is difficult. And uh, fighting change is a hell. You can be eliminated, some would say. Yeah, fighting change especially. Um, we need to face facts and uh, understand that, look, we want to go this way. It's not everybody. Everybody want to have his, his, want to be in his comfort zone. Everybody, every human being would like to be in his comfort zone. Mm. But what makes the difference is a strong leadership. Mm. Strong leadership makes a lot of difference. See, it, it, you, have a, you have problems mm -hmm. with your own people, but what you have set up the agenda to do, mm. just go ahead and and deliver. If you join us, this is PM Express Business Edition. You're talking about COVID-19 entrepreneurship and those angel investors out there. When we get back or we come back from the commercial break, we'll be looking at the future of entrepreneurship here in Ghana and how should or how would COVID-19 change this whole future of these burden entrepreneurs out there. We'll be right back after this break. <music> Welcome back from the break. This is PM Express Business Edition. As you talk about entrepreneurship, COVID-19, and those angel investors, will they still be around to protect us as guardian angels or they'll get lost in the midst of this whole COVID-19? Dr. Daniel McCauley is the group chairman of McDan Group, and this is somebody who has been very, very passionate about entrepreneurship. We're getting more about the season two of McDan Challenge Program and where it is going, or has it come to an end, or the future is still strong. COVID-19, and I knew that you also came up with a challenge about trying to support people to come up with medical equipment and even sanitizers and all the rest and blah, blah. What is the future? Do you think that we still have a future for these entrepreneurs out there, i.e. what COVID-19 is doing to us? Or maybe let all of us go and sleep and let's allow the big firms like you to have their way. No, you see, we are living in a developing country. And one interesting thing being in a developing country is uh, a lot of opportunities. Mm. The opportunities we have here, we don't have that in Europe and America. And uh, now that Ghana is developing, as Ghana is developing, opportunity abound everywhere, from the agri sector to commerce, service sector, anything you want to do, you do it well. I mean, you reach there. 
you, re you realize that uh, we've, we've set out some few people producing sanitizers. Mm. I mean, they are making their daily bread now. See, if you, if you read the news, realize that we're the first company, McDonald's first company to come out to support young entrepreneurs who want to produce sanitizers. But don't you think that that is where the finance thing still comes in? Because these firms that were out there had no, the this capital is a, this take... Is, no, no, this is an emergency and it's towards a particular project. So the funding was critical. I mean, it's not, it's not much money anyway. Mm. If, you could, if I tell you how much money I spent on the, my corporate social responsibility. And I have never, on a single day, filed that in my returns. My Why tax, are you not doing that? I will start doing that soon. I need a task. The task consultants are looking at it for me. Last year alone, we built, we're building about five schools in the north. We built an astro turf costing us uh, five million, which are changed the whole community. Mm. Um, we're helping entrepreneurs. Some are now on their own. Some even had to quit their job just to come and say, thank you, now we are making money. Mm. And see, if you look at the impact, it's not only them. One of the young ones I mentored and built up, now it has workers over 50. So just see the impact. If in a whole year I could do that for some few young men, and that is, that is a big impact into the society. So it's about time the, regu the regulatory authorities also had to start looking at mm. us and looking at what we are doing to support government. It is very important. It's good you've spoken about regulatory environment because then some will say that if with all these agencies out there, and not to mention them and even the ministries and all the rest, if still it has to take people like you and these angel investors to support these entrepreneurs, then again, there's a lot of question, questions about all these agencies, all these ministries that are supposed to put structures in place to support entrepreneurship in this country. Well, for me, the, the Ministry of Business Development, Development. Is, is doing a lot, is, is, doing, is, doing, is doing marvelously well. But uh, I will be talking to the minister to get some entrepreneur involved in his plans. I mean, he's doing that already. I've supported some few programs with him. And uh, he's been an amazing minister. Mm. And standing far, looking at him and his program. But he can be more innovative. He can be more creative. And he can be able to put more young entrepreneur through that ministry. It's, mm. it's one of the ministries that was... was uh, uh, brought out by this mm. president that I really admire. Mm. You talked about you seeing mentorship as a very great challenge for these entrepreneurs and not capital. What form should this support, this mentorship support take? That is it about telling him that, George, listen, structure this business this way. You don't need funding. You just need to build network. How should this mentoring? Because people like you, and other angel investors out there, and other burden businessmen out there, don't have the time. I mean, we've observed something right here, and we know how your time is quite yeah. difficult, and to even get this interview. Yeah. You know, it's difficult if you don't have the heart for it. And again, you cannot mentor somebody who is not ready and prepared to be mentored. It's, it's two things. Um, you cannot waste your time on the youth who think he's a superstar. You can't waste your time with a youth who is not ready to learn. And um, whilst mentoring is more important to me, so what I do is I go into their mentality first. I sit with you, have a drink with you. I mean, most youth, I can tell you that 70% of the youth in this country are looking at the wrong areas. They are looking at the wrong areas. What, are the, what should be the right areas? Uh, you wouldn't know till I wouldn't know till I talk to you. Is it because I spend of time the, with you, yeah. talk to you, you tell me. You ask them one, two, three questions, then you can see that they are chalk. Then that means you, you, you are not prepared. 
you know. Is that you, the case of the, a lot of these entrepreneurs out there? Yeah, you, you have to let, I always say that preparation should be able to meet opportunity. So if, if you are talking to me and I can give you an opportunity, you have to be prepared and be honest to yourself. So many a times it's, it's, it's kind of misfeeling. Many a times also you, you cannot really tell, but I talk to you, I can redirect, and even the same thing you are doing, uh, you, can, you can run, but you are walking mm. or crawling. But talking to you, I can tell you that you can run. Encourage them and they will be flying. For businessmen like you, when you engage any prospective uh, business person, entrepreneur, and all the rest, apart from the capital, push it aside, what do you look out for? If George, if it comes before you, I have a strong business plan, I need money, I need your support, I need your mentorship, I need your backing and all the rest, what do you look out for in me before you say that, listen, this guy is a good guy, let's support him? I look at your attitude. Respectful. I'll, I'll show the good things before you that moment because I want your support. You can't you can beat me. You can never beat me. I'll look at your attitude. I mean, if you invest in an idiot with a billion dollar, what do you expect? In that 30 to? minutes, how can you establish the George you are facing idiot? No, no, no. 30 minutes, I, 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 it might be difficult, but Wanna? with time, I can tell that uh, George Rafi will blow the cash. To buy a Tuareg or a yes, Benz and I will be able to have a good time have a with good time. people in town. Yes. So it you think it's attitude, attitude, and attitude? It's attitude. You see, what creation, 70% is attitude. 25% is skill. 5% is knowledge. Mr. McDonald, as you wrap up on this, tell me more about this season uh, two of your McDonald yeah. Challenge uh, program that seeks to support budding entrepreneurs out there. What should we expect from this new season one? Are you going to double the money to uh, maybe one million dollars? Well, um, no. We'll keep it. We'll keep it like that because hundred thousand dollars. I even got to know that the hundred thousand is even too much. It's even too much to sell. I would up. disagree with you on that one. It depends on how you see it. <laughs> we are start already. We have close to 15,000 youth who are the send application to be part of the, the challenge. And um, uh, we'll soon start screening their applications. Um, we'll soon start uh, um, bringing them in to talk to them. Whilst we are building, still continue building the old ones, um, well, it will be it, it will be it will be to be quite mm. a sight. Mr. McDonald, my last question to you, and I'm not coming here, a friend of mine actually asks you that when you see very generous businessmen out there like that, they have a political ambition. Is that a situation for you? Nah, 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 nah. MP? Nah, nah. Minister? Nah, nah, nah. President? Nah, nah, nah. nah. Uh, Just a genuine or politics, generous... Yeah, politics is out. I mean, um, um, I don't know where God wants me to be, but I know God wants me to be a billionaire to help others. An influenza in society? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, yeah not politics. Being very influential to the youth, um, to have the voice of the youth. I would want to be the one to carry the voice of the youth. I would want to be the one to, pre to, to represent the youth. I would want to be the one to represent the future of the youth mm. because uh, we need strong leadership, mm. but politics is out. If your people in your village eight years time come to you, want to be an MP? I can do more without being an MP. I, I can do more. Immediately you go into politics, you become uh, limited. Right now I'm doing more for this country. I have, I have more social capital and I have more voice within the youth. It's not politics. I don't want to have anything to do with politics now. Dr. Daniel McCauley, I thank you so much for your time as we looked at uh, your spirit and support for entrepreneurship in this country. And it looks like the future, it might be bright as long as you have people like you supporting these entrepreneurs. 
and encouraging more of your colleague businesses to also uh, go this way. I've been PM Express Business Edition as we explore the future of entrepreneurship, angel investors, and COVID-19 and how things will look at. Well, we will come back to him again when he begins his whole entrepreneurship challenge program and what will come out of that and what will be the future of the winners that will be chosen at the end of this program. My name is George Yafe. Have a great day.